Hello and welcome back to All for United. We've got a, a match preview to do. I think it's all in the back of everyone's minds that we do actually have a pre-season game tomorrow, especially given the uh, the official tweet brought out today. We'll meet, me, briefly mention it, but we do have to stay on track according to the big boss upstairs. But yeah, we've got a brilliant panel lined up for you. I'm really excited about this show, so I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Click subscribe to get daily Manchester United content from Passionate Reds, only on All for United. Look at that, just like that, I'm joined by three very handsome gentlemen in the panel, and Stu as well. So how are you boys doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all good man, all good. All good. All good. <laughs> Well, we've, already, we've, already, we've already started. I feel so sorry for him. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> he gives it back. He gives it back. back. I do. Well, we'll, we'll, address, we'll address the elephant in the room then. Obviously, uh, we, we're not allowed to talk about it too much, given yesterday's show. But, um, yeah, it, we've got. if there was any doubt about Fabrizio Romano's credentials yesterday, they've been put to bed today. The United account have officially announced that they've reached an agreement with Varane. Now, this doesn't mean... He, the, the deal's done by any means. There's still a lot of work that needs to be put in. But the fact that they've tweeted it out is obviously a massive, massive boost. So, Bainsey, welcome to the show. I'm really interested to see what you think about, about this calibre of signing. Rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. Don't rate him at all. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Uh, no, look, I mean, this is the type of player that we've, we've wanted. Uh, I've, I've said for a long time, we need a Bruno-type player in the centre-back. And I think we've got him. Uh, Rafael Varane, he's... His CV just speaks for itself. World Cups, the Leaguers, the Champions Leagues. I mean, it's the perfect kind of player that we need. It's, it's perfect for our spine. He's one-on-one -on -one really good. He's quick. He's, I've heard bits and bobs about his aerial ability. But from what I, I've seen with Real Madrid and what he's won, I can't fault it. I can't fault it. And it's, it's about time United get serious and start uh, really purchasing players at their absolute top and calibre. So, yeah, I, I couldn't be any happier with Varane. It's, it's going to be such a good season ahead, hopefully. And uh, it could be the, the the signing that pushes us to a trophy. Hopefully, anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't disagree with you. Uh, before we move to Alexi, as, as the banner across the, the bottom so perfectly says, please do like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. We'll have more videos for you every single day. Uh, but Alexi, you know, uh, brilliant to have you on as well. It's been a while since I've been on a show with you. Obviously, uh, Bainsey mentions that the credentials of Varane and the, and the stature of this signing, given how disappointing our, our recent transfer windows have been, do you think this summer is a real statement of intent from United? Yeah, um, great to be on. And yeah, no, definitely is. Um, when you look at it uh, objectively, you go, we never replaced Rio Ferdinand. Uh, we never replaced Nemanja Vidic, really. Uh, we never replaced Ronaldo. And then we've suddenly kind of got Sancho and Varane, who... I'm not saying Varane's going to be as good as Ferdinand, but it's a big, big start in kind of replacing that partnership uh, for Varane and Maguire, for Rio and Vidic, um, which is massive because, you know, there's been a void of talent at centre-back for years uh, with Jones and Smalling and Rojo and all these players. And we've just kind of gone and got, yeah, like a kind of Bruno type in centre-back or, you know, he's kind of, it's like buying the Mbappe of centre-backs, isn't it, almost? It's just like the, pretty much kind of the best centre-back we can get, really, because I think the other one is obviously Van Dijk, but we're not going to sign Van Dijk, obviously. So, yeah, I, I think it's huge. And about statement of intent, it will be a statement of intent if we sustain this every window. It won't be a statement of intent if we do it this window and next window we just kind of don't spend again. But I am feeling positive about it overwhelmingly. Uh, and I just really hope, though, that this carries on next year. Because if we do this kind of thing every year, even spending, what, 100 million odd at Stunder, which we can do, we'll be challenging every year. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fair enough. It's, it's definitely something to aim for. We've, we've been that devoid of success that we're, we're sort of getting a bit desperate now. But, you know, Varane's not the worst option to bring in. Andrew, brilliant to have you on, mate. How are you feeling about the deal? Uh, very happy about the uh, the deal. So it seems so unlike United to, you know, do a deal so quick. It's usually long and drawn out, like 
like the Sancho affair that lasted like two seasons. So it's it's good to have, uh, well, subject to the medical and the turns, which hopefully should all just go through. But Rani can fill that void and in the defensive defensive line. And, I mean, his CV just speaks for itself on why he's so highly regarded in the world of football. I mean, over 300, appearance, 300 appearances for Real Madrid. He's won three La Ligas, four Champions League, and about 10 other major honours, including a World Cup as well. I mean... I so say we've never quite filled the void since uh, Vidic and uh, Ferdinand left. Okay, we've had Maguire, but there's always been that question mark over uh, Lindelof, and especially in the aerial jewels as well. But I think Rand's confidence at the back will help us play a more forward-thinking game. And also, I think he could have an influence on uh, Paul, Paul Pogba as well. It will get him to be as good as well, because they've only played on the international stage together, but that's going to change now so it'll be interesting to see how how well those two link up as well so hopefully he can bring out the uh, the best in Paul Bowen for him to work hard and hopefully maybe he might stay he might not yeah let's hope so let's hope so well Stu listen I've, I've had quite a good happy day today so I'm only going to give you two minutes at the absolute most given, that, given, right. given that United <laughs> have now officially announced this well not officially announced it but Release a statement. It's as good as done. Are you are you starting to get excited about this signing? Well, I never get excited about anything. No, I'm kidding. Um, look, um, the lads are right. Um, you know, um, as we were saying pre-show, um, you know, for runs in the top five, top ten centre backs in world football. I quite do. I do like Baines's analogy actually. Of uh, we've we've signed a Bruno Fernandez for the. Um, uh, for the centre half position, that's 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 quite apt, really, because he does have that ball playing style about him. He is a bit suspect in the air, Bainesy, um, but that's because you've got somebody like Ramos uh, or Pepe who will dominate in the air anyway, uh, and that's what was happening when he was playing alongside Real Madrid. What I would say is, and I quite like um, uh, Alexis and Andrew's uh, points as well. We have struggled for a long, long time in two key positions uh, and I'm talking about the club as a whole really and when you look back at uh, our goalkeeping situation we struggled to replace Schmeichel until we got Van der Sar in and then we would we've been quite lucky Van der Sar through uh, to De Gea we've been quite fortunate with that but we've had this similar kind of gap between uh, Vidic and Ferdinand to potentially Varane and uh, Maguire as what we had with Schmeichel and Van der Sar coming in, and those are big points, really. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know why we struggled there. We've had competent centre halves, but we haven't had uh, a centre half that could really dominate and, and, and bully centre forwards. Um, and Maguire's not quite there as a bully yet. I mean, he, he, I, I suppose out of the two, if you can compare and contrast, uh, he's going to be more stronger. He's going to be the more aggressor. I know that a lot of people see Ver, uh, Varane as an aggressor, but I, 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 I've not seen that. And watching him, I've not seen it because you can't be the aggressor when you've got somebody like uh, Ramos alongside your Pepe, who takes shit to uh, you know a completely different level to most centre halves, apart from Chiellini and Benucci, obviously. Um, so uh, from a, all I was kind of getting at over the last couple of videos was. Uh, just I've tried to offer a balanced view. It's kind of gone against me, really. I've kind of been bombarded with, oh, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. But um, look, t time will tell. It's a great, it's a steal. I will say it's a steal uh, for, was it 41 million euros, including add-ons? What was our, I think the upfront freeze on the... Um, I think it's 41 million pounds, so it works out about 50 million euros if you include add-ons. That, that's including add-ons, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's an absolute steal. It really, really is a steal for his calibre. Um, I know we were linked with him when he was, I don't know, 18. I think we could have got him for about 3 million quid, couldn't we? Um, but maybe, you know, maybe he's the right fit at the right time for the club, the way that Ollie wants to take us and he wants to run us on a 4-3-3. So, yes, James, smiling. Do you know what? I gave you a little bit of an extension because you weren't as sad as you were the other day. But to be fair to you, we, it, no one wants to sit here for an hour and watch five people agree with each other. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? So we appreciate different opinions. We'll quickly, very quickly answer this because we can't talk about it for too long, but it's injury problems. Now, I've, I've heard a lot. Of, I've obviously been spending my entire day 
being unemployed, watching the interviews about Varane, watching analysis on Varane. <laughs> and in recent in recent years, I think it has become a little bit of a worry. I don't think yeah. we're getting to uh, I don't think we're getting to sort of extreme measures. But you know, there there is always an injury in him. I don't think it's quite an Eric Bailly yet, but. You know, if we get 30 Premier League games out of him this season, it's guaranteed to do us good, isn't it, really? Can I just intercede on that just a little bit, just a tiny bit? And and that is, and if you think about it logically, he has had a couple of issues with injuries over the last four or five years. But when you look at uh, when you've got Pepe and Ramos, you don't necessarily need to rush him back. And the issue with mate, a lot of clubs, and certainly with our club, is if Maguire was injured uh, or Lindelof, because they've been our, you know, our mainstay, haven't they, at centre-half, you have to rush them back because other than that, you've got Baye or you've got two and AB. So it's the only, the only crumb of comfort, I would say, to the special one. The chances are he's probably had that more recovery time because there's a less of a need for him to yeah, come straight back good, in. That's a good point. He's probably fully recovered from every injury he's had, hasn't he? But listen, yeah. we'll, we'll draw a line under Varane, otherwise I'm getting sacked by Ben tomorrow. Uh, that's a, that's I think you muted yourself, James. You muted yourself. Ah, oh, come on. That's a rookie oh, error, that one. Schoolboy, oh. schoolboy. But yeah, he was but, getting but, sacked and then he mute, muted himself. <laughs> I'm just keeping you all on your toes. I don't know if excitement. But yeah, back to the topic at hand. Um, we, do have, we do have a game tomorrow and um, I, I forgot about it, really. I don't know if you lot did, but obviously... Thinking about it today, Brentford, Manchester United versus Brentford. I believe it is at Old Trafford as well, so that'll be good. Um, Bainsley, I'll come to you. Obviously, after the disappointment of the QPR game, in terms of performance and result, what do you think needs to change for, for the game? The whole, the whole first eleven needs to change. Uh, no, no, look, I mean, people who take pre-season games really seriously, just give your head a wobble a little bit. I mean, look, we had all of our under-23s playing, I think, apart from... And Rampasaka, I think it was. Um, I mean, can you really count Lingard? I don't think you can. He's going to get sold. Um, uh, for this Brentford game, what I'm really looking forward to is the actual formation we'll play because there's a lot of reports coming out that uh, Oli wants to change to a, a more attacking 4-3-3. And it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic plays. Now, look, he hasn't got the personnel to do it. I res- that's, that's fine. And I don't even think half the squad's even back yet. Uh, Bruno came back today, so he won't play tomorrow. Um, but it'll be interesting to see the formations on that on that game. Um, I'm not too disappointed about this QPR game. Um, look, it's a it's a it's just a preseason game where people just need to get minutes into their legs. They've just come back from a two three week holiday. Just get a bit of rust off them. It's fine. I'm not really concerned. I'll be more concerned when we get into the latter stages of preseason when we're playing. Um, is it we've got Everton? Is it Everton, the last game of preseason? Yeah. Yeah, um, and then we've got uh, we've also got Brentford tomorrow, and then we've got Preston. So it will be interesting to see how the Everton game goes on because that will give us a really good indication of where the players are in terms of fitness. Because that's all preseason is is just fitness and working on certain tactical parts of your game. Um, but yeah, uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. I'm only looking at formations tomorrow. I'm not going to look at who's playing, how they play. The team usually gets changed at half time as well, so there's 11 subs that come in. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to look at the scoreline at all, I'm just going to look at how we play in formations and who gets those minutes. More importantly, I think, yeah, that's that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, Alexi, I'll, I'll ask you this question based on the comments because this is an interactive show, we do want people to get involved. There's a couple of comments that have sort of brought me to my next question. Jake is saying who, who is expected to play, and uh, do we know if there's any first teamers to join up? Yet, um, I've read that Van der Beek and Dallo could be involved tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. You know, given given Van der Beek's tough season last year and, and Dallo sort of seemingly falling out of favour, are you expecting to see them and are you expecting a big performance from them? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Van der Beek, um, Dallo, and James are probably the ones where you're looking at and saying they're kind of fighting for something. Um, James actually came back early um, before P- Pogba and Bruno did because he wants to fight for his place. And obviously Van der Beek didn't play that much. And with Dallo, I mean, it's kind of like with Lingard and Pereira where they're not even necessarily fighting for a place in our team. They might even be fighting for a place in someone else's team, you know, to impress, you know, that 
that's why I find this preseason so strange because of the Euros. We've got a squad of players and a large proportion of them might not be there. So, like Bainsey said, it's hard to really look at the QPR game and go, oh, it's a disaster when it was kind of an under-23 team with a few players who might not even be there next season. And I'm including younger players in that because some of the younger lads might get loaned out even. So how many of these players will actually be there in a month's time? I'm not too sure. But yeah, I think, yeah, Van der Beek and Dallow, would love to see them again. I think if Pogba's going, and if we're going to a more attacking formation, Van der Beek is really going to come into the fold this season. Um, I think he's obviously had a bit of a difficult year, but I think he's acclimatising. I think he'll be in. But Dallow is a strange one because Oli just doesn't rate him, does he? I'm not completely sure why. I mean, I've never been overly impressed, but I wouldn't mind just having him as backup Dallow, to be honest. But yeah, we're going to see players fighting for their places because they have to. And obviously, uh, something as well, I guess, uh, the goalkeeper situation as well. Uh, Dean Henderson will be back in soon. De Gea will be back in soon. And there's that dynamic. So there will be players fighting for just for different things. Younger players fighting to impress for a loan. Maybe some players like Pereira fighting to get a transfer to a club. And then obviously like Van der Beek fighting to get into the team. So there's a lot of dynamics going on. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, me too. As far as pre-season friendlies go, obviously it's hard to get excited about them as such. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Andrew, I'll, I'll come to you next. There's a few a few people in the comments talking about this 4-3-3 that Ollie wants to implement. A bit more forward thinking with, with just one holding midfielder. I think that was tried at QPR at least, with uh, Matic sitting and Pereira and Lingard in front of him. Are you looking for more of that? Are you looking for, for us to build on that shape that Oli wants to go for? i say, yeah, I'd like Oli to go with that sort of formation. I mean, because I was at the QPR game and say, well, we need a slightly better player than uh, Pereira because I just felt like he did <laughs> nothing in that game, whereas Lingard, <laughs> he, was, he was more lively, he scored the goal. But, I mean, in terms of pre-season results they can never tell how good as how good of a season we may have i mean it's obviously it wasn't a pleasant experience for those players conceding four goals but the aim of the pre-season is to get the players fit and assess, and for the coaches to assess them it's just and coming back from the game I was like seeing on social media ollie out and oh. this t- this tea i was like come it on you it, it, it just pre-season yeah. i don't maybe because ollie had signed the new deal and then how he played he just like he just played into those united fans it was like who don't like ollie at all i was like well just give your heads a wobble but yeah uh, so i know ollie uh <laughs> said that Maguire, rashford Shaw, and fred i think they're due back next week Looks I mean, like, yeah. uh, the remaining other players that have been on, on the international i think they're due back this week obviously bruno's returned today so Ollie's going to be picking from the same squad as uh, QBR. I expect uh, yep. Jesse Lingard to start again. So, and he'll want to uh, impress as well because I know Ollie said he's in his plans for the season. But whether that means he gets to start any games is another question. So, I know when he was on loan at West Ham uh, last season, Jesse said, "Oh, I just want to uh, <laughs> just want to uh, uh, just want to play." Uh, yeah, I say another player I'm looking forward to seeing is uh, Anthony Alanga. I thought, even though we were losing the game, Anthony just looked every time he looked, good. Ball, he he looked just, good. He was a threat, and I was like, "You're yeah. going to do something here." And I think he had, besides the one goal he scored, I think he had two other great chances. I thought if you'd have put them away, we might have ended up drawing the game. But it's, I say, with Brentford, I think. They've uh, had a good uh, start to their pre-season. I don't think they've lost once yet. So, And they'll want to prove a point before they begin their uh, Premier League season. So in terms of, uh, say, Van der Beek, I know he's back. I think he might get on in the second half, maybe uh, Delo as well. But I think Is he Martial might... back? Yeah, he's, he's back. back in training, but I don't think he's, 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 he's still in line to start. Is he... Yeah. He won't. He won't play tomorrow then. No, I don't think no, so. Don't think so. It might be and a bit of a surprise if Harley might throw him in. Yeah, you don't know. Knows. Yeah, but yeah. Might get twenty minutes or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we just just want to see United have a more assured defensive display, and well, and but as I say, he's going to play in the under twenty three. So we just just gives them more minutes, whether some of them are going to be in the plans or not, or just for the loan deals or for players that are going going out. It'll be. Interesting to see how we play tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, it will, it will definitely be interesting. That sort of leads me on to the, uh, onto the question for you, Stuart, because yeah. 
we, we, we want to be entertained, I suppose, with every game of football I watch. It's not too important in a friendly, but who are you wanting to see tomorrow? Because a, a suggestion of mine would be that I'd, I'd like to see more of Hannibal. He's not got many minutes so far, and I think he's he's a player that can really bring the game to life. So from your perspective, who are you wanting to see on that pitch tomorrow? Yeah, you see, you're absolutely right there. You see, tomorrow, unfortunately, again, is a, it's, a, it's kind of a nothing game for us. It's a bit like QPR. And uh, it's a bit like, um, oh, I can't remember our first friend. It was, no, mine's gone. It was it, Andrew, because you were there. Well, the, fir- the first friendly. The first friendly, yeah, because Andrew was yeah, there. Was, was uh, was Dar- Derby, Derby. Derby, yeah, yeah Derby. No, yeah, uh, that's played at a much slower pace there than the one against yeah, QPR. Yeah, yeah. Ollie's, Ollie's got, a, it, this pre-season is, is very, very similar to the kind of last pre-season. You know, you've had the Euros, uh, and the bulk of the squads uh, got through to the final. You've had the Copper America, and now you've got the Olympics. So you've got players drifting in and out all of the time. And whether he plays a four-three-three tomorrow, a four-two-three-one, a four-four-two, doesn't really matter because when we come to the game on the fourteenth um, uh, against Leeds, then the personnel is going to be completely different. We want to be testing out formations when that personnel is back. So in answer to your question, James, I'd love to see uh, a Mejbri uh, play, uh, Shuratiri play a full 90. I'd like to see Donny van der Beek come in and play a full 90. He won't because he's getting over his injury. Uh, I think playing Tom Heaton for a full 90 would be better for him. Stop changing him for Grant because there is a, a slight possibility, isn't there, that Henderson still might not be fit. I don't think as a goalkeeper you get over a hip injury just like that. No, that's uh, a serious injury for a goalkeeper. Yeah, and obviously we don't know, you know, I, I don't know if De Gea is back yet or is he still away, I'm not quite sure. So I think tomorrow, uh, get Mata in, get, you know, we signed, uh, 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 you know, for another year, let's get him playing, let's get Matic playing, let's get wan Saka in there playing, like hopefully two and say B. And uh, Mengi will have a much better solid performance uh, than they did against QPR. Uh, you know, any time Lyndon Dyke scores against you, it's a real problem. But let's let's flip it because here's the real key to this now. Brentford have probably got one or two weeks. Most of their players will have one or two weeks on us. And they are a wonderfully talented football team. Wonderfully talented football team. They play the simple things very, very well. You know, they pass up from the back well. They have players that take chances. They're not afraid to receive the ball. They're very, very quick. One, two, three passing. Their through balls are quite usually quite accurate. They're always on the offensive. Uh, but they, what they tend to do, they, and this is going to sound really strange and stupid, but it, you, if you kind of get what I mean, they go forward as a unit and they come back as a unit. It's almost like a swing. They go forward together and they come back together. So when they're out of possession, they're brilliant. But in their turnover and their recovery, and then their forward play, it kind of it's it's almost a swing in motion. It's it's wonderful to watch. Now I didn't know a lot about Thomas Frank, really, until he came, came to Brentford. I don't know about any of you guys whether you knew about him. I didn't know at, at all. And he seems a, a very intelligent coach. And I think uh, it will be a wonderful test for us. And a great test for uh, the younger players. Uh, but I do come back to what I said a couple of days ago, James, if you remember. There is a huge disconnect, isn't there, between under-23 football and Premier, Premier League football. Once the um, once the uh, demise of the reserves was taken away, and under-23s are playing very similar style, you know, built footballers. They're playing against, you know, same height, same width. <laughs> You know, so I'd love to see our, our younger players like Mejbri, uh, Alanga again, because I, I do I do like him. I, I rate him. I'd like to see Garner get a, a game tomorrow, Levitt uh, get a game and just see how they handle themselves with a bit more of an intense and better, you know, better skilled footballers on the pitch. It'd be a really great test for us. Uh, yeah, shame I'm, I, I can't go really, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So sorry I diverted a little bit, James, but I just wanted to make that point that. I think tomorrow is going to be great, but all in all, it won't matter until we do get most of our, our full team. eleven. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. It's, it's finding that balance between getting your first team players ready and and giving the youngsters some experience, isn't it? I think. But um, 
Yeah, don't don't worry about going off on a tangent. We've got some time to fill talking about Brentford. So I was hoping you'd come on, come in with a little rant. Um, yeah, hey, just just thinking ahead though, and it's something to consider. By the way, that that when we get uh, to this time next year, we don't know how it's going to look, do we? Because we've got the World Cup. Yeah, I've always I, I don't I still don't get that. By the way, because mm-hmm. it's a, it's definitely a Winter World Cup, right? So. How, it still is, yeah. I, I, I don't get so. Does the season just stop and then I'm not, I'm not World sure, Cup and then it starts yeah. again? Like, it's so yeah. I don't know, I don't know. It's logistically, yeah. it's going to be a nightmare. My understanding of it is it's literally the season's going to stop for about a month and a half or two months and then carry on, which is really bizarre because I mean, when money that talks, happens? doesn't it? Though, at the end of the day, that's what happens yeah. when you have well, a few they, billion quid, you can just quickly side past to FIFA. Well, they're exactly. keeping the winter break, are they, or do you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. It's the winter break in January this year. Will they keep? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. It's, it's January for two weeks, isn't it? Yeah, um, teams have a week off and then a week on, don't they? Do it. That's do it. it. Like that, so. yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. But yeah, so it's going to be three years in a row of just really disrupted football, isn't it? Then mm. I, guess. Mm. I guess that's what I mean, I, that's what I was leading towards, really, Alexa. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's bizarre. I mean, I don't, for the life of me, understand how it's going to work. Just no. having a World Cup like that because. You're just not really going to be in the mood for a World Cup because let's say we're like ten games into the season and we're top of the league, or yeah, and then everyone, has to, and then... <laughs> everyone has to piss off for a World Cup. Yeah, yeah, and then it's it like completely oh, breaks the flow as well. Yeah. And what what if like you know Fernandez or something gets a really bad injury in the World Cup and then he's out for the season? It's ridiculous. Like I just I think it's a crazy idea, but okay. yeah, I think another negative of it as well is games are going to be crammed in. You're going to have oh, to get terrible. you're going to have to get the, from. The start of the season to December, the end of December is worth the games crammed into the start of the season to the beginning of November, just yeah. to make the season schedule work. And I think that's going to the players aren't getting enough rest as it is. It's not going to be nice at all. And they've got to qualify as well, haven't we? We haven't qualified. Yeah, got to qualify. Yeah. 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 That'll probably, probably be ending up doing though at the end of this season, sort of May, maybe June time. Yeah, we're doing maybe so. maybe the qualifications end, or actually, no. Usually they're during the season, though, aren't they? So, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't get how that pre-season works because you would have six weeks off in that summer, uh, next summer I'm talking about, and then you would have the season. And like James says, you have to just cram all those games in. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be it's, that's going to be an interesting one. And again, it's it's only the players that are gonna they're going to suffer from that. I think the uh, well, yep. I think it ends the week before Christmas. So literally, the players will be back, and I think they want to restart the Premier League like Boxing Day. There and then, oh, yeah, yeah just like the Boxing Day. Like, Terry right. bloody hell! It's not on, it's not the World Cup final is on my twenty-second birthday. So if England win the trophy, that'd be oh, that'd be a nice little present, yeah. wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. It's coming home. Coming home. Coming Are we going to start the coming home? It's coming home. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. I, 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 Bainsy, you know I haven't got that much of a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Theory, but anyway, yeah. we, before, before Ben does actually shoot me, we do have to talk about the game tomorrow. Yes. I wanted to pose a question that was open to all of you, so I just want someone to sort of put in with your answer to it. But Brentford have already had three pre-season friendlies. They, they obviously got their pre-season started a little bit earlier. Now, uh, this isn't a worry for me leading up to the game because obviously the game isn't really that relevant, but is it a worry to anyone else that, you know, Brentford won't be the only team either that have done more pre-season training than United, they've done more pre-season friendlies than United. Is it a worry that teams might be better prepared for this season than we are? And uh, given how poor our start to season was last year, is, is that a worry for anyone? For me, yeah. Definitely. Because if you look at the preseason last year, the players got, what, two weeks? And that was, I think they squeezed in two or maybe three games and that was all behind closed doors. We're getting a similar preseason now. So some people have come out and said, oh, yeah, the players have had three weeks rest and they'll get in, they'll squeeze in their preseason. But it doesn't necessarily work like that because most of our squad won't be back uh, today or till tomorrow or maybe till the end of the week. Um, and if it is till the end of the week, then they're only they're only getting in two pre-season games, which is exactly the same what happened last year. Uh, not to mention also, I think people were sleeping on Leeds, who most of their players didn't go to the Euros. So not only did they have the whole Euros as a break, they then come back, 
had another extra two weeks, and we know how Biesler sets up his teams. They do not stop running. So it will be very interesting on that first. I'm not trying to downplay it in any way that I'm trying to save face or say that United might lose. Of course, I want United to win, but I think everyone's looking at that Leeds game thinking, oh, yeah, you know, we've just signed Sancho and Varane. They're not even going to be ready for Leeds. So um, it will be interesting. I, I am worried about it because last year it was a shambles. Uh, mm. We lost to, what was it, Crystal Palace. We just about beat Brighton after they hit the post about 19 times. Um, we lost to Tottenham 6-1. We lost to Arsenal 1-0. And that's when we started to see really the, the fitness sort of come in. So that And that was almost five weeks later. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm worried about it. Um, it's slightly longer than last year. Yeah, of course. Um, the players have had a Euros and things like this. But, yeah, it is a concern. I don't think I don't think people are starting to... Re I think people will only start realising that when we play Leeds. And we'll see how prepared they are for their pre-season. Yeah. Uh, just before anyone dives in, I do want to bring this comment up. I just want to see what you lot think about it because Hammer's saying he's 25 on Thursday. Now, you lot have seen Hammer. Wow. You've, you've seen Hammer. He, he's trying to say he's four years older than me. Wow. Four years. That's it. Hammer, you're I at thought, least 35. No comment. Don't try and, <laughs> to be don't fair, try Hammer, and... I, I think you look younger than James, to be fair, Hammer. <laughs> That's actually, Steve, that's a compliment for me. I always get told I look 12, so thank you, mate. Yeah. 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 Well, but, I, I um, get told I look, um, well, I won't say what, uh, you know, how old I, uh, you know, but. Uh, 28. 28. 28, yeah, yeah. 27, yeah, 28. Nice you've got it, lads. Well done. Well said. <laughs> well said. Well said. Um, actually, if I may, if I may go next, unless Andrew or Alexa, you want to go? Mm -hmm. I was polite, yeah, Steve. Thank you for that. I'm being polite tonight. You told me off. Early. I I would um, echo Bainsey on this one. Um, you, you know, uh, Brentford have to. Brent, Brentford are in a very, very similar position to us, actually, because if they don't hit the ground running, Brentford could be in for a very long and torrid season. We've seen it before with newly formed and newly promoted teams. Uh, with regards to um, our opening game, uh, it's everybody's dream game, isn't it, Leeds? But Baines is spot on. It's probably going to be the most difficult physically for us. Might not be technically difficult for us, but physically it will be difficult for us because Bielsa will have them well drilled. And they will be fit. If it's a hot day, it's going to be tough on the lads that maybe have only, only had maybe 10 days worth of pre-season and their legs. Um, I would consider. I actually Charlie made a point, and 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 I'm and I'm on board with him on this one. We can't afford to lose probably any more than two games, three games max next season. Yeah. Uh, because of what City are capable of doing, not perhaps what they will do, but what they're capable of doing. And then if you put Liverpool into that mix, if they have their golden season again or something similar to that golden season. And so an opening day loss, nobody wants to lose any game of football and nobody wants to lose uh, your opening game. But normally you could swallow an opening game loss. I know it's not great. You can normally swallow it, but I'm not so sure you can this season. I think you will need that early momentum to keep you in contention. Now, certainly, you know, Fergie famously said, and actually Dave Sexton as well, uh, back in the 70s would famously say that the league will take some kind of shape, start to take shape around Christmas, and then really take shape around Easter. And those two are the, the goals that you need to be within a smidgen of your top three, you know, or, or, or your top two, or even try and go into the new year on top. And so I, I, I'm actually with, with Bainsy on this. I think Ollie's got a bit of a He's got a, a headache. Task. Yeah, he's got a bit of a headache on, on what he does and how he manages it. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy. But um, my lad will be there. Um, we only renewed uh, one of our tickets this year. So uh, me and my lad are sharing it. So he'll be there for the opening day. And I just hope we, we can get over the line. And that's not being, you know... You yeah, know, pessimistic or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's just a view. I don't know why everybody. To be fair, though, Stu, just to add on to that, I think in one of the pre-season uh, post interviews, I can't remember if it was after Derby or QPR. Ollie said it, and he said that you can't win the league in the first five games, but you can certainly lose it. 
So yeah, mm. yeah I mean the first the first five games is uh, Leeds, Southampton, Wolves, Newcastle, West Ham, Villa, Everton. But then you we've got a stint in October and November where it's Liverpool, Tottenham, City, Chelsea, and Arsenal all one after each other. So mm. yeah, it's it's it could be you're right. It could be one or lost. Uh, sorry, not one, but it could be lost uh, in in those first five games. And I don't think Leeds is a is uh, if you ask any Premier League team what team do you want to play first, Leeds would not ever be someone's choice. And we saw last year actually they they almost beat Liverpool. Liverpool oh, were lucky to beat Liverpool, Liverpool shouldn't three. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Them. yeah. so yeah, it'd well, be interesting to see anyway. Well, I want to I want to get Alexi and Andrew think... involved. Okay. Oh, go on. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to say as well, like, uh, linked to what Stu was saying, I think football's changed slightly over the last decade because before a lot of the teams uh, we won kind of the league with, we could have really appalling starts. Like, we used to be pretty poor at the start of seasons. I think even 07, 08, we drew a lot of our first few games. I think maybe draws with Newcastle and Portsmouth and we were quite a long way behind. Uh, 12, 13, uh, we lost to Everton yeah. at the start. Yeah. I mean, I think... Was it 98, 99, like, wasn't a perfect start as well? Like, it used to be the case that you could kind of be a bit dodgy for a few months and then we always just won. It would be like Arsenal or something at top and then we just won about 10 out of 12 games and then we'd be top. But that's not the case now. I mean, a couple of seasons ago, you know, we got 81 points and lost the league by about 19 points, I think. Yeah, um, yeah it's completely different now. And then that is exactly the thing that that's why pre-season I guess now you could argue is more important because if you lose your first two games you know like you guys were saying we know what City are capable of if they have another 100 point season you're basically not catching them unless you win pretty much every game every game for the yeah. whole season uh, yeah you know? absolutely right yeah T totally agree yeah well, and it is it's just a worry and like I completely agree playing Leeds on the opening day like they are going to be very fit and you know it's a worry but i i think if we can come through those games with wins and then when we get properly fit for the big games we should be all right because last season if you look at it it's obvious but the points where our players were properly fit was when we were actually pretty much challenging for a league we were a bit bit rubbish at the start of the season because we weren't fit and then towards the end of the season we were shattered but in that bit in between where the players were fully fit we were probably the best team in the country for a bit. We yeah. were top. Right? Yeah. yeah um, maintaining fitness is key. And I think that's why Ollie's I won't like touch on Varane too much, but the reason he's got Varane is so he can have Bayer and Lindelof for the Cups and then Maguire doesn't have to play every game. Van der Beek can play in the Cups, so Bruno doesn't have to play every game. Then he can actually challenge for a league without his one rotation. And, mm. and you've got Lindelof, don't forget Alexi, you can fill in at right back. He plays right back for Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If, if needed, if ne you know, if needed, so th th there are options there. And if we do bring in Trippier, um, I mean, crikey, we all raised our eyebrows, didn't we, when Trippier started off at left back in the yeah. opening in the mm -hmm. opening game? He did all right, had, though, didn't he? he? He was brilliant. So if yeah, we he are, did all right. yeah. if we are able to get Trippier, it gives Ollie other, other areas. So yes, I, I totally agree with that. Sorry, James. Well, I was just going to ask Andrew a question because there's been a lot of talk about gaining fitness over pre-season. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you sort of how it will affect our preparations tactically as well because, you know, Varane and Sancho come in, they're, they're highly reputable players. It's obviously going to have a big impact on the dressing room, hopefully a positive impact. But nonetheless, the, the dressing room and, and the players on the pitch are going to need to get used to playing with these two players. Now, do you feel we're at a disadvantage because they're coming back later? They're not going to have many games to bed in at all. You think it's all going to be a little bit fresh at the start of the season? So it could be a, a disadvantage, but I just feel like those players they can hit the ground. They can hit the ground running. Um, hopefully, Ollie will play some of the the first team. Well, first team squad in the Everton game because obviously the next well tomorrow and Preston we're not going to see uh, probably any of the first team in those games. I mean, like. With tomorrow's game, I mean, Brentford, obviously, they've started uh, really well. They've won four, four of their pre-season games. I know Thomas Frank has used well, virtually all the first team in those games. And like at the weekend against Watford, when they played, uh, Ivan Tony bagged two goals as well. And he'll be 
he'll be looking to uh, uh, get on the score sheet tomorrow. So he's going to be a player we need to be uh, keeping an eye on and trying to uh, stop him from scoring. And I know they've got about three more preseason games after this. So, and also just to pick up on Stu's point, I say this season they could have a torrid time in the uh, league, or I think they might could be like Leeds. They could surprise everybody and do pretty well. And uh, but it's to say it's a long goal season. I think tomorrow's game is going to be an energetic encounter. I just think it's going to be played at the same pace as the QPR game. It just say with regards to the Leeds game, it's just I can see Ollie throwing Sancho and Varane in just. Those players, yeah. those players are meant to play in the big game. So, I think those players will get used to each other quickly, and they'll work out how each other play. And hopefully, we'll get the uh, result we all want it and uh, an opening day victory. But let's say, I think it could be a disadvantage, but I hope it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, this this talk of um, squad depth that's going on in the comments on the on the show. This is this is unrelated to, but I want to get it on record. I saw today that um, so one of the only bright lights of West Brom season last season was OK Yukushlu, a, a defensive midfielder. I'm sure you've all heard of him. Now there's reports he's available for 4.5 million. Now I know he's not he's not up to the standard of being in the first team, but if we're talking about squad depth, Jesus. is that not one of the best signings you could make? Four and a half million. Yeah. Four and a half Are you million sure? pounds. It's four and a half, not four two. I've, I've, no, I've seen it on reputable West Brom pages. I've posted it today that West Brom... Are Give them five million and tell them to keep the change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's surely that's, an, that's a bit of a no-brainer for four and a half million. Yeah. Well, that would be a no-brainer for me, yeah. Why? Yeah. Really? Yeah, just, I just wanted to put it out there in case it does happen. I just want to know, Stu to give me more credit, like he did with Cameron. <laughs> <and that bit. laughs> no, that's what made money that has. I, I've not yeah. seen that, but yeah, I, I remember the player. Yeah, wow, Jesus. Sorry, I think, Andrew. Yeah. I was thinking on transfers. I think from what I was reading earlier, I think any more signings coming in will be de de dependent on outgoing. So I don't know whether you yeah. can sign any, well, I'll say players now with big fees. You know, it might be dependent on, I don't know, the likes of Pereira, Dallo, and even maybe Lingard going out the door. So in that way, the money from that can be used on an one or two extra players coming in so so we'll have to see well i think is it the transfer window it shuts later this time it's like the end, end of august or something yeah, like that. Yeah, mm. I don't know, was it the last couple of seasons they closed it the day before the season starts so i knew it hadn't been re well extended but i just couldn't uh, remember uh it was the end of august or the beginning of september so mm. it'd be interesting to see if any more additions come along I think they will. I, I think there's one more coming in. If, I, if I'm being yeah. truly honest, yeah. then there's one more. I think we'll end up selling probably Lingard, Pereira. I think there's touts of Jones getting a loan deal somewhere. Um, I think uh, Newcastle or Everton are uh, yeah. interested, but I don't yeah, know yeah, Ever yeah. Everton are going to be willing to pay. I think he's on 80 grand a week. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Who wants to so, pay that much? He's on more than that. He's on about 120, isn't he, Jones? He's on a lot. Yeah, he's on a lot. It's ridiculous. Sure. I'm sure he's been, like he's been injured ago. for about three and a half years, isn't he, or something? I think it probably yeah. equates to 120, uh, Andrew, the amount of time he's actually played okay. with the yeah. post salary. Yeah. I think a stat I read months ago, I think Phil Jones, I think he's made even made more appearance than Eric Bailly has. And Eric Bailly, I think he'd have made more. So I don't know how that's got, worked got out. Both of them still is kind of ridiculous isn't it when they're both injured yeah. all the time you know that does say that something needs to change you know that they need probably, to go basically i'll probably trust by ever jones it is a bit worrying it is a bit worrying we've just given by a new what, three year contract that, that worries me a little bit but um mm -hmm. listen i wanted to I want to get on to the final question that i had to ask again I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to the to the panel so anyone jump in but we're talking about outgoings and the potential outgoings. Are there any players that are looking likely to play against Brentford that, in your mind, are sort of this is sort of the last chance this preseason? You need to see something out of them this preseason, otherwise they need to go. Whether it's on loan or permanently, is there anyone that springs to mind? Pereira for me, but he might play tomorrow. But <laughs> so I, I think I think the ship sailed. I think he's really on the way. Is that the uh, dark? Yeah. When he played against Derby County, the first pass he made, it was like it was just a cross and went out for the, a throw. And I was like, 
and that's not the best start you want to make. And then uh, QPR, I didn't really see much of him. Was, Lingard was impressing me more. I thought if he was going to keep Lingard or Pereira, I'd choose Lingard because Lingard, I think... <laughs> think thing is with Pereira as well, he's got a name for being a pre-season Perlo and he was mm -hmm. just, he was absolutely rubbish. So, yeah. For, I was, agree on, with Andrew, uh, yeah. was it on loan at Lazio last season? He, mm -hmm. I don't think he made many games and, he, and he didn't set well the games alight. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was his chance to, well, either get a move there or somewhere else or come back to United and prove his worth. But mm -hmm. I, I would say if the one player I would push out the door would be him. Well, well the, the name I had. Right. What do you say, sir? What's I he actually good at? Right, right. Oh, sorry, Lexi, go on, but. He's, you know, he's no, very what, good at earning money. That's what he's good at. Yeah. Like, I've just never known. I remember when, like, he was kind of coming through a few years ago, people used to rave about him. And I'd say to people, what's he good at? And they go, well, you know, he's just good, isn't he, at various things. And I'm like, but what's yeah, he actually what? good at? I don't, yeah. I've never understood it. Seems like a lovely bloke, don't get me wrong, but I, I've just never understood what he can do, really, to be honest. And, it, yeah, he, he's got to go. Oh, I, I, sorry, Lex, I'm only giggling because I said that I put that... I posed that question last night to the panel about Varane. It's exactly what I said. I asked that, didn't I, James? I asked that <laughs> really? question. And everybody uh, going, yeah, they go like, mm. <laughs> Look, yeah. it's, it's a really good point, actually. It's a, and I always <clears> think it's a great question. And it's that type of question stumps a lot of people because a lot of fans, they go to the game, they soak up the atmosphere, they watch the game, but do they really watch the game? And so, like Andrew, yourself, Baines, E. James, you'll, you'll, you'll watch the game and it's an entirety. You know, what players are doing off the ball as well as what they're doing on the ball and what they actually do they give. Is his spatial awareness any good? Is his vision any good? Is his touch immaculate when he gets it? Can he pass it two yards and then walk three yards into space to receive it and move it quickly or within the space of three seconds? You know, things of that nature. And uh, he never offers that. And he reminds me very much of Cleverly. If you remember mm. cleverly, it was mm. very, very similar. He, he would have one great game in twenty-five uh, moments. Yeah, you, you, know, you would wonder what he was, what he was doing. And I think there's a couple of players within our squad. That, and I think sometimes clubs need to take a business decision about this, and maybe. Is that, oh yeah, <laughs> and, and, may, and maybe. The likes of Pereira, the maybe the likes of Jones, should be allowed to go on a free. Now, some people will say, well, that's just stupid because you can recoup money from them. But if you can't sell them, you're paying out three or four or five million pounds a year in salary. So somewhere mm. something's got to give. So you'd be better off giving them away in many ways. Yeah, getting just that, getting rid. Yeah. rid. Getting that salary off your way, off your bill. And then you will get the likes of Lingard who will supplement 25, 30 million. If you do move Dallo out, he's going to get you probably 20 million. Uh, and and so you've got enough then to, you know, compensate the club in, in getting what you need. By removing four players, though, and only getting one in, it then goes back to what we were talking about, squad depth. But going back to what James was saying about giving youth a chance, we do have some absolute outstanding youth. And... We are talking about our attacking prowess at the moment, or have done over the last couple of days, and we've hardly any of us have brought up Ahmad again. He seems that we mm -hmm. see people seem to have forgotten about Ahmad. You see, so we've Good got point, we've got players there that I think if you are if you do want to trim your squad, and we do need to trim the fact there's absolutely no two ways about it, and say, look, Pereira, thanks ever so much. We're cancelling your contract here's a million quid or whatever, please go and find yourself a club. You won't get a squad yet. Do you remember Danny Rose? Now, most people on this panel would suggest that Danny Rose is he's certainly Crystal Palace level or something along those lines. Yeah. But Tottenham, Mourinho, you ain't getting a squad number, mate. We'll pay you 60, 70, 80 grand a week, but you're not doing it. We need to be that ruthless or just, just move these players on. So that's just my opinion on it. We did it with did um, it really, um, Romero. Was it Romero? We did that last year. Mm, didn't only yeah. didn't put him mm. into the goalkeeping, uh, the goalkeeping four. And yeah, and he were he, he was just about to go to Everton as well. To be fair, um, and then he something happened with that deal or something, wasn't it? Mm. 
Um, so yeah, Romero, you're right. Those two just need to be ruthless. Jones, mm. Pereira, uh, those type of players. Yeah, we don't need them. So just get rid. You know, we've got. I suppose we've got enough backup in those uh, in that area of, of of the pitch. So why not try and do that? Makes complete sense. Yeah, I mean, uh, one one player that I had in mind in terms of the question that I asked earlier is maybe Brandon Williams, because I, I don't want to get rid of him uh, permanently. Obviously, they, they've had the discussion in the comments I've been reading of. It's been a pretty good discussion as well. But mm. I think, given that we've got Tellez and Shaw, who are both undoubtedly better than Brandon Williams, I think if if he's going to deliver on any anywhere near the sort of potential he does have, he's going to need to start playing regular minutes at some point. And, and we can't afford to give him those regular minutes because... I think he will be a hindrance to the team if he does come in. But, you know, a, a club like Southampton or who have just lost their left back or someone like that, he, he could be a great fit. So I think, I get Tellers is going to be injured for a little bit, but it's not a long-term thing. So he'll be back in no time. Do you guys Luke think, Shaw, do you guys... I don't know whether Luke Shaw is going to be fixed. And now they said he was playing with broken ribs in the Euros as well. So there's a doubt whether he'll make the Leeds game as well. So he... He might have to play uh, Brandon Williams. Oh, get know. on with it. Get a call to you... direction. Get it sorted. Get on with it. There's two weeks between the Leeds game and the end of the window. So, you know, we, we can have Brandon Williams in for the first couple of games. That's not a problem. But yeah. I'll, I'll, again, I'll open it to the panel. Do you think Brandon Williams needs to go out on loan? Do you think this is sort of make or break for him this season? Yeah, for me, definitely. I think it's Southampton, isn't it? He's going. Is there Southampton yeah. there? Was reports yeah, that one of the rumors, yeah. yeah. And like you said, actually, James, there's two weeks, so it could be a possibility we sign Trippier as well, who, as we saw for England, can play left back, maybe. So, yeah, for me, I think I, re- I, I do actually like Brandon Williams. I think he's got that certain shit housery to his game. Oh well. Um, yeah. And yeah, I do like him. He's young. I don't think he's good for good enough yet for United. I'm sure. A couple loan spells will probably do him a world of good. And the other player that I can back as well is Axel Twenzavi. I think it, uh, he was going to, I think, Newcastle. There's reports today that he was going to Newcastle. And he's the player that I've really liked. He did really well at Villa. He got them promoted. He came back to United, got hit with all kinds of injuries, and he just he just couldn't get himself going last season. Um, so I think for Axel and, and Brandon Williams, a loan move, it's got to be Premier League, I think, uh, but loan moves for them to be really, really good, beneficial for the player and the clubs. Yeah. Anyone else got, got any suggestions? Yeah, I mean, Axel's an interesting one, actually, because I've I've really thought for a couple of years like he's going to really break through and I see a really, really brilliant player in there, but it just never quite happens. But I mean, I saw him... When did I see it? It was um, Fulham at home... I went to and I was watching him because I was sitting quite high up. I was watching him and I was like, he looked to me more composed than Lindelof did. Lindelof looked a bit scared and jittery and all over the place. And I thought Axel actually seemed quite composed, but he just has moments where he seems to lose concentration and he struggled with in- injuries and stuff. Um, I mean, my only worry is obviously we can't keep loaning him forever because obviously he did go to Villa and he was really good. And then I kind of thought he's going to come back now and he's going to come in, but he kind of never has. So it's coming to that point with him, like stay or leave. But I think, yeah, he, he's got a point to prove, I guess. I mean, there is a really brilliant player in there, but, you know, I think him and him and Mengi had a tough time the other day, but what do you expect really? Mengi's not really played for the first team at all, but yeah, on Brandon Williams as well, 100% needs a loan. Um, when he first came in the team, I thought he looked really good, but he has looked a bit, um, I don't want to be mean, but kind of out out of his depth at points, I think. He just doesn't look quite mature enough. He's a bit raw. Like I love how he is with his passion, but he's quite raw as a footballer still. His positional awareness is a bit off. Um, but yeah, it is probably Brandon and Axel Twanzebi, the main ones, if you're talking about fighting and stuff. I... Um... Uh, James, a couple of lads know my opinion on Tu and Zabi, uh because I think he's a, a brilliant player, a brilliant talent. So I, I won't go into my thoughts on that, but James knows him anyway. With regards to Brandon Williams, I actually think he's missed his window with us, lads. I, I, I think when you look at the overall squad, and if I was him, 
I, I would be looking at what's happening with Manchester United at the minute and am I doing enough to warrant being at Manchester United at the moment? And the simple answer to that is I'm not. And so should I, as hard as that would be, you know, cut the umbilical cord and go to somewhere like Newcastle or, or, or Southampton or even Brighton? I, I think Southampton actually would be a much better fit for Brandon Williams. Um, I think they would he, they would suit his style of play better. I love his tenacity because he's great. He's my type of uh, fullback, Alexi. I, I, I like a good, hard, solid tackler. The end. I'm not interested in you know what he can do going forward. His main job is to tackle. That's it for me. Uh, and it, Brandon Williams, his positional sense is slightly off a lot of the time, and it's very difficult actually to get caught wrong side. <laughs> or ball watching when you're at full back because you should, you should be watching your game, you know, for the peripheral really, or straight ahead of you, depending on which side that you are. And he, he's very weak in that, but tackling, he's nowhere near as good as wan Don't get me wrong with his timing, but he's as strong as wan in terms of tackling his overall play. But it's not enough for Manchester United, I'm afraid. And it's not enough to warrant a squad place in Manchester United, because what it does, it takes up a salary again, and it comes back to money, I get that, but it takes up a salary. And it's all about, I, I think he'd have to take a pay cut. Uh, I, I think he's on, I think he's on about 50 or 60,000 quid a week. Yeah. At the moment. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Um, and so he'd have to probably go down to about 30 grand at, at, at Southampton. But if you've got any aspirations uh, of, of, of wanting to play for your country, you got aspirations of actually just wanting to be a professional footballer. You know, the key there, actually being a footballer and playing the game at the highest level. And maybe sometimes you have to take yourself out of the equation, take yourself out of the limelight and go almost rebuild yourself. And and just briefly on Tu and Zabi, um, and Karthik can shoot me now. We'll put your sentiment in the message. Shut up, we spoke about that weeks ago. But... Uh, Oh, just, just for Alex and Bainesy, uh, and, and Andrew probably knows anyway, I've suggested that Turin Zabi should maybe look at reinventing himself as a right-back because I think he's got the attributes to be a right-back over a centre-half. You know, he's tall, he's rangy, but he's, oh, he's powerful, but he's quick. And he, I think he's got the attributes. He's not very good at going forward, I accept that. But again, that wouldn't sit, uh, sit you know, with my kind of right back anyway so those are my thoughts on on those two players so just yeah, to I pick think... up on uh Twan Zabi there Stuart I mean it just I think he's got to pull out all the stops uh, next season whether that's with us or at mm. on loan somewhere else I mean he has all the traits to succeed at the club he just needs to prove it now with an entire campaign of uh, top flight football I mean I mean he's a good defender anyone who saw that game he played against PSG, where PSG, he just handled yeah. it in Mbappe, like, and not Mbappe's, know, Mbappe, Mbappe's pace is because oh, when he they played at Old Trafford, his pace is frightening, and the way Twanzebe handled him in Paris, like, I thought Mbappe mm -hmm. was just going to run all over him, but he just kept with him, and then he he need where he stays at the club, he probably does need a, a loan where he can play week in week out. I mean, I mean. Cause, Best season he had was at the uh, Aston Villa, and I think that was in the ch uh, the Championship there. Championship. So, but, I th but he needs like Brandon Williams he, regular regular football. So it's just he, he, he played it right back a couple of times at Villa, you know. Did he? He, yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he played, he was, he played he all was. over the shop. Yeah, yeah he, he did. Was. He did. And, and well, uh, one game for United was it the League Cup last season against Everton? I'm sure he put him in at right back as well. Right back. Yeah. And, and you know the PSG game you're talking about? He played. In a right of the three. Yeah, right, he was, he yeah. was a right yeah. on the three, if you remember. So he was very comfortable there. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I, I thought I, that PSG game, to be fair, I thought that PSG game was him saying, OK, I'm good enough. Well, I, yeah, I generally I'm, thought that was him yeah. going to be mm. sack Lindelof off. I'm, I'm good enough to go into mm. that squad. But I think he just, I think he got an injury or he had a moment in a few games yeah. where everyone started questioning him again. Um but I mean, let's see. Yeah. A question, a question for you, Stu, though, about Brandon Williams is: Do you mm. think he's a late bloomer in terms of? Do you think he will go out on loan and he will develop and then become like this all-star left back that we've that we've always wanted, or right back even? 
Unfortunately, I, I, I don't. Uh, I understand the question, and I don't. And the problem that he, he has had, if you look at Brandon Williams over the last 18 months, he, you know, um, three or four games left in the season, wasn't he back in the under 23s? Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. that, that's a bit yeah. of a kick in the teeth for a, a first team player, an under 23 player, <laughs> and in 60 grand a week. It's yeah, not exactly. Long. And, and so, so Stu, I, I, I will I will say I think that was partially due to him coming back from an injury and trying to find fitness. Yeah, I I, I think so, but th that's the problem with under twenty three. So James, what I was talking about, it doesn't offer you that it doesn't offer you that type of road back to first team football. Um, unfortunately, it's such a shame because the under twenty three games it, it's probably a bit of a nothingness. I think the Premier League is big enough now, and English football is big enough to put in a, a a proper, I don't know, do you want to call it Premier League B, whatever. It's something, very, a structure that's very, very similar to La Liga, mm -hmm. where, you know, there's a Real B, isn't there? Or a, yeah, there's a Barca B and a Real B. Barca B, that type of thing. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, I, and I think that would be a better transition uh, to first-team football because you could have the likes of Tellez playing alongside and they're uh, to Enzebe. You'd be playing against a much better uh, equipped opposition than what you're playing against an under 23. Standard Sorry, goes up, doesn't it? Yeah, I take your point though, mate. It probably was. But I, I, I my fear with him is that he's going to be another Cameron Borthwick Jackson, uh, you know, who, who, yes, we all thought had a wonderful, but, you know, that type of thing. Um, and Alex Love, who, who came in, I think it was Alex Love, wasn't it? Or Donald Love, sorry. Donald Love. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. You, you know, you know the types of player yeah. I'm talking about, don't you? And I think Brandon Williams technically is a better all-round footballer than that, so I don't want to. I just think he'll rot with us. That's the biggest. So I would say if we can get some money, I would take 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 the money. Stu, you're just trying That's to flex point. all your uh, sort of weird football knowledge, aren't you? I know. <laughs> I reckon Stu plays football. Well, I'm going to. I'm going <laughs> to. I've already credited you for something. I'm now going to credit Mr. Wall for the old Donald Love. He bought. He mentioned Donald Love. Um, uh, last season on a couple of occasions, so uh, there you go. Did he, he can't remember it, but he did. Yeah. <laughs> he can't remember it. Yeah, I was just yeah, about to say, uh, he's looking like, What was he on about? So, so Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wolf getting the thumbs up. I was gonna say, the other player I was thinking of was uh, Paddy McNair as well. Oh, oh, Paddy McNair, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tyler, Tyler Blackett, as well. Was it MVG that yeah. played Tyler Blackett yeah. and Paddy McNair as centre back, wasn't it? Against Everton. Yeah. I think we played so. Arsenal with them as well, I think. Yeah, he played uh, yeah. Arsenal and uh, Everton when David De Gea made a penalty save and then that loss. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. I, remember I mean, the, you know, football's littered, though, with talent, isn't it? You know, proper yeah. talented players that have flattered to deceive and have failed to actually deliver on their promise. Um, and the, the reason is they were never... They were advised badly or the clubs couldn't, couldn't do anything with them, but they never really... You know, sometimes, sometimes you've got to fall on your sword to succeed in life, haven't you? And, and and I think Brandon Williams, although he's only young, he's at that career where he's at the tipping point of falling on his sword, and he needs to make a decision. He needs to be properly advised on to how to prolong your Premier League career. Because you don't look. We all know about Ravel Morrison. There's but there's been loads of them. There's been Danny Calamatri at Everton years ago, burst onto the scene, and who's he? You know, nobody's. Nobody talks about him anymore. Jermaine Pennant. You know, these players, if they were advised better and made better choices in life, they could still be playing now. So that's the only thing I would go. But I wouldn't say no to a loan, lads. Don't get me wrong. I, I just think for him and for the club, a partner ways would be better because we would recoup some money. Uh, and it opens up, especially if Trippier comes in. What seriously? What will he do if Trippier comes in? If Trippier comes in, he's Brandon Williams is done at United. Mm. He's done. I, don't, I can't. I can't see him being better than Aaron Bissaka, Trippier, Luke Shaw, and Tellez. There's no way. I don't. You. I think everyone can agree with that. That there's. Mm. I don't see much in. Well, I do see a lot in Brandon Williams, but is he really going to develop so much sitting in the reserves or under 23s or on the bench? Right. And you've got those other four playing. So a loan does make sense. And if he does well, then we can go and sell him. Yeah, and Jesse simple. Lingard should be an advert for this, basically. Yeah. Of the yeah, yeah. Going on a loan to a small team. On. And I think, I know it's not United related, but it's something Deli Ali should have done uh, in yeah. January. 
because he might have gone to the Euros if he'd done it. And yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for going to a smaller team and thriving. And then suddenly you, you're in with a shout for England squad and stuff like that. And a big move Especially again. Lingard, because he mm. looked like a 10, 15 million pound player, maybe even less. He went to West Ham, absolutely tore it apart. And now everyone's saying he's a 30, 35 million pound player. So it's like, mm. it's done wonders for him, for United and especially for West Ham, who need a player like that. So yeah, yeah it makes complete I, I, sense. I'll tell you who I'm quite interested to see um, is Billy Gilmore, see how he gets on at Norwich, because I quite like rate him. I think he's an excellent uh, midfielder. It'd be interesting to see how he gets on at Norwich. And it's a good advert there for younger players to say, look, you know, you know, maybe I should be trying this. And I've always said, though, that if you loan, loan a player out, if you don't loan them to the top tier, then you don't really see a future for them at your club. And so that's that's also another another thing. But um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? When you look at our overall squad, it's interesting. And you know, perhaps if I was our championship manager, that's what I'd be doing. I cannot, <laughs> still, I cannot believe you've unprovoked. You, you spoke about a Chelsea player unprovoked on a channel called All for United. Yes, I cannot believe I, it. Okay. Apologies, yeah. I was just making a point a bit like uh, you didn't you, yeah. didn't, you yeah. didn't you didn't stamp on Alexi for Deli Ali by the way. Go on, get over there. Start, start. Yeah, he's not he's not even a real player though. I'm, I'm actually worried about Billy Gilmore in the future. <laughs> Deli Ali's not even not even a footballer anymore. He's just a model. Um, <laughs> so we'll have to put yeah. up with Alexi. Yeah, you make a relevant point, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> this is all just it's all anger out of you make, put a negative tone on my show yesterday and Carl Thick going to come in and rescue it yeah he's but, not happy, um, yeah. <laughs> has anyone has anyone got any other points before we end it say that again <laughs> has anyone got anyone got any other points before we before we end the show no not for me there's a few actually there's a few comments about Ghana um, I think he's going back to Not Nottingham Forest and I know I know a few Nottingham Forest fans um, through work and things, and they were saying that he is a special special talent. So that'll be interesting to see um, how he gets on. Uh, hopefully, he does go back there and and helps them uh, possibly get promoted. So yeah, let's see because um, Brighton for me, Bainsey. Brighton, you reckon a Premier League move yeah, will do be a much yeah? better move. Because the way Pop it, it would be, a Premier League move would, would be brilliant. And if he gets game yeah, time Brighton. in Premier League level, then yeah, of course, it makes sense. Um, yeah. but I don't think Brighton are interested, though. That's the only problem. No, 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 it's okay. between Forest and Swansea. I was yeah. going to say, because Basum is there, isn't he? So Yeah, it could be I just a, think it'd be a great fit under Potter, I do. Because Fo- Potter's a footballing coach. Yeah. He's got a lot of yeah. football in now, so he'd be a wonderful... Hey, what about Brentford? to be uh, another good chat from under mm. uh, Thomas Frank, because the way they play football and develop the game on turnover, transition... Uh, sorry. Stu, no, thank, thank, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Look at James is about to throw up now. <laughs> no, no, I, I, can't, I can't disagree with Stu. I'm nice sometimes, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, listen, I think we, we've, I, I'm not really sure how we've managed to get nearly 70 minutes out of a, a pre season friendly, but it's been great. I've loved every minute. Yeah, I've loved every minute, and I hope you guys have as well. So thank you, you boys, for joining me. It's been a, a Brilliant panel made me look a little bit, a little bit better. You've given me a bit of redemption. <laughs> massive, massive thank you to everyone in the comments as well. We've had loads and loads of interaction. Yeah, today. loads it's of really brilliant yeah, to yeah. Read them. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. I know we've got a off United on Cut clip coming tomorrow about Ollie's con that debate that we had. Stay tuned for that if you missed it. And we will have a Brentford review and Preston preview on Thursday. So you know, stay tuned for that as well. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Go and check out these brilliant sites on Twitter as well. The handles are in are in their name tags. But other than that, you know that brings us to an end. So we'll see you next time.